Hello, Moto America fans, and welcome to this latest edition of Off Track with Carruthers and Vice. This is a special video edition from Road America, and we have with us Larry Pegram, who has returned to the paddock and uh, is going to be racing a Ducati this weekend. Um, Paul, kind of cool, right? We got somebody who's kind of around our age. It's out there, going to be out yeah, there. Yeah, he track. shows up every once in a while. I never know why, but he still <laughs> yeah. does. I'm like, I'm like, I'm like herpes. You think you got rid of me, and then all of a sudden, <laughs> damn, it's back again. <laughs> <laughs> all righty then. <laughs> so, I got a bunch of things I need to ask you about, Larry. Mostly, you guys don't know this, but Larry's actually kind of a neighbor of mine. He's in the a town nearby, and his his kids go to a school literally about a half a mile from my house. So, yeah, which um, he's not allowed within yeah. a half a mile. No, I can't be by the <laughs> register. I have a van with candy, and no, no, they never want to go anywhere near me. But uh, anyway, that's another story. So, Larry, tell us about um, you know we heard a rumor about you doing this. How did it get put together? And you know, talk about the bike and what the team's all about. Well, you know, Ducati called me and uh, Paolo Chiavati and Tardoxi and uh, uh, Domenicali, and they said, listen, would you ride our MotoGP bike? You know, we're not feeling like the guys are doing enough, and, you know, we've never had a rider as good as you were uh, on our bike. And I said no, but they, then they said, well, there's a super stock bike. Is there any way you maybe would do some laps at Road America? That's kind of how it started. Uh, no, you know, the, the way it really started was last year, Jay Root, who works for Ducati, um, called me up and said, hey, they're doing a Ducati thing at Road America, and would you like to do it? And I said, yeah, it's about time. You know, you guys got Roger Hayden out there, and who else they have doing all these Ducati things? They never even rode Ducati. So right. I love Roger. Don't get me wrong. He's a good buddy of mine. But but they never call me, but I've always been busy. But anyway, so I said, sure. So I came here, and I met Michael Kiley, who owns Tyler Cycle and Moto Union that was putting the thing on for the day. It was a big track day with Ducati people and they had BMW here and it was a really fun time. And he goes, Hey, I got this super Legere. You want to ride it? And I was like, yeah, I'll ride it. He goes, no, this is a hundred thousand dollar motorcycle. You know, and I go, well, then you either tell me you want me to ride it or you don't want me to ride it. Cause <laughs> if I ride it, it or not, I'm going to ride the thing. You know what I mean? I'm going to go hard on it. And he goes, yeah, ride it. So I went out and I hadn't rode a bike. On a, on a road race bike other than the vintage stuff we do when we go to that uh, Australian race, which is a ball, by the oh, way. Oh, right. The, yeah. The the thing down at Phillip Island. Yep. Anyway. And the thing was just, I hadn't rode one since 2015, 16, basically. And so uh, the thing was awesome. And it was a street bike. Now, granted, $100,000 street bike. But like, wow, this thing is awesome. I go, man, you throw slicks on this thing. I could probably, you know, be in the top five in the super bike class. Now, that's me talking. Yeah, you know, right. okay. but yeah. I couldn't believe how fast it was, and the wings on the thing was what was what, what amazed me because coming up over the hill, it was the fastest bike I've ever ridden. First of all, but coming up over the hill, flat stick, and you didn't have to even think about breathing it. And it used to, they'd always wheelie over the hill, but those big wings, and at, at the end of the straightaway, at top speed, it was like that's what it felt like. It was like super smooth, where you're normally like, Bleh! and so I was like, wow, this thing's awesome. That's what started it. And then everybody was talking a little bit. And then Jay Root said, hey, they got that bike that PJ rode. Why don't you guys run that at Road America? And then Michael's got involved. And we started talking. With, and then I didn't even know Farachi was involved in that whole thing. So I started talking to Araldo. And I got all excited. And we talked to uh, um, Bobby from there and Luis, who I guess owns the team. And it just came in this big thing. Anyway, Michael put it all together from Tyler Cycles and Moto Union. And... Long story short, we have a, a super stock bike that we're racing here this weekend. So, so tell us the reasons for you know that you, was kind of a long story to get no, to that wasn't no it was <laughs> fine but but it, not it, for you it, yeah. it, begs, <laughs> it, it begs more questions too because you know we've talked about the fact that in two thousand nine you won here on a ten ninety eight R Ducati yeah. um, for a foremost sponsored one when, when they were one of your sponsors yeah. I was trying to see if they're still on there no somehow, but. I miss I miss them they, they yeah. were good guys that that deal. Uh, they were just always a great sponsor, but yeah. then, you know, kind of everything changes. So, yeah. So why did you, why stock 1000 and, and, and you're going to be racing in Superbike Cup, but not, why not completely Superbike? I think uh, because, there, I mean, this is what was available. This okay. bike was available. It's competitive. I want to, I want to have fun, but I want to be, I don't want to be, you know, like five seconds off the pace type right. thing. So, you know, this bike is competitive in the class that we're racing. We still get a ride in the Superbike class too. Uh, it won't be as obviously as competitive in Superbike as it is in in the Super Stock class. So, it was it, it was available. It's fun. It's not a full on Superbike, and we had to go test for you know ten days. I mean, I'm I am a little bit older, so my my expectations are to have fun, 
And if we go fast, great. But if we have fun, that's the most important thing. Yeah. You've always kind of amazed me because... Well, you, thank you very you much. Know, <laughs> yeah. You sound like my There's wife. There's going to come a but. There'll, but. there'll be a but here. Yeah, so. yeah. But, but, <laughs> but you kind of amazed like, me, but... No, because you're, you're, you're always, you've always amazed me that you can come here and you can jump on the bike and be pretty quick right away. You can go to a dirt track. You can, it just, you're just a good motorcycle rider. Well, I, it's one of those deals where I started when I was three. You right. know what I mean? I don't... I, I literally don't know anything else. You know what I mean? I mean, I, I, uh, I don't know what else to do if, if, than get on something and try to whatever I'm in or on or driving or riding. Obviously, on the road, not not as much, but I try to make it go as fast as it, it it's capable of going. To the, and I'm capable of making it go. I just that's just like when you bit. when you roll out of here for practice. How how many laps does it take you to like your brain get up to speed, or or is it does it happen right away? Or I is think it, it happens pretty. I mean, two or three laps and wow. right back to it you know it takes you know what i've noticed now because i still am doing some of the dirt tracks and what i've noticed now is one thing is i noticed that i won't it, it's not that i won't take the chances i'll still take the chance but it's got to be a bigger reward so mm -hmm. in other words if i got to pass you on the outside on the last lap and it's pretty sketchy it's got to be to win it's not got to be to get fourth place <laughs> you know what I mean? uh you know so I, I, that's one of the things and i noticed that i just I'm more, I would say, calculated on my approach, but it's basically just more cautious. You know what I mean on things. I, I I check stuff out a little bit more. I'm not going out the first lap on a flat track and just going at it. It takes me three or four laps. Okay, it's not too wet. It's not too dry. Right. Okay, you know. What's harder to go come back to? I don't know because I haven't done the road racing. So I would I would say the flat track, and only because you show up there, you get four laps of practice, four laps qualifying race. Right here, you get some here track you're going to get some track time, and and th that's what happens to me at the flat tracks. Is by the end of the main event, I'm like, okay, let's start over now. I'm right. up to speed. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. flat tracks have always been that way, though. You like, you better when you go when you roll out on the first lap, you better be flat stick. So, but it helps if you're doing it every week. Yeah, yeah, and that's the other thing. Those guys are doing it every week, and then I pop in certain events. So. It, you know, you you started out in flat track. Does it is it your first love? Yeah, you know, I started. I actually started racing dirt bikes. You know, and my dad would take me out to this place called Honda Hills, which you know yes. there in Ohio. Mm -hmm. um, and I'd go out there, and they had a nice flat track up on top. Dick Clampeth owned it, who had won the Daytona two hundred right. years ago, and they had a flat track, and then they had a motocross track. So we'd be on the motocross track, and I'd sneak up on the flat track. It was one fifties, and my dad goes, "Do you want to do this?" And I'm like, "Yeah, I like going fast, Dad." You know, so. We started doing flat track. I was like five years old and we went to three flat track races and then we drove to California for the amateur nationals. <laughs> so I was like, you know, we were like, we went from zero to wide open. And then from there on, that was it. That was all we did every weekend. It's one of the things that, this is a little complicated, but one of the things that I thought by well, now. It's complicated. You, he's not going to get it. <laughs> well, let's try it. Down. He's from California. Let's just South try it. Real simple. <laughs> So I thought by now, Larry Pegram, you would have Pegram Racing, you would be an owner of a team, and you'd have a, a rider or two that you'd be working with. But before you say anything, a few years ago, I went to the pol the polling place in my town, yeah. and there was a vote that I made. And I think I might have helped Larry Pegram change his career a little bit, or at least work on something else going on. There was something that I voted to have happen in Ohio that has to do with... Well, that. yeah, so that's part of, you know... Talk about... Because we don't know. I don't know what so happened. So I retired in 2015, basically, when the EBR filed for bankruptcy. We were doing the World Superbike, and that was kind of it. I did one race in 2016 with John Ulrich when Chris retired, and uh, then I did one race here, I think it was 2016 or 17, I don't remember, with Steve Shivey on the BMW. Yes, you did. That's right. And so that was kind of the last road races I did. Yep. And... Right about 2016, I wasn't doing anything. I had retired and I had saved up some money and I was, you know, trying to figure out what I wanted to do. And I decided that, you know, Ohio had passed a law where medical cannabis was going to be legalized and they were going to have this massive application process where they were going to give away 12 licenses basically for the whole state of Ohio. And it was a merit based application. So I just jumped into that with both feet, learned as much as I could and went out and hired the best people. Kind of the same thing I used to do with my race team. I went out and hired the best people because I'm not the smartest guy in the room. I'm smart enough to know hire the smartest guy in the room. So I did that with my business and, and, you know, we've went from, we, we got a license um, and we got, uh, you know, the full, what they call full vertical. So we got to grow dispensaries processing. So I basically was very successful in getting the license and thought, Oh, this is going to be great. It's going to be easy. And then found out 
wow, this is a lot harder than I thought it was. So at this point, you know, we have 120 employees and, and uh, uh, a 53,000 square foot grown Ohio, two dispensaries processing and everything's just rolling along uh, nicely. But it's been unbelievably um, just difficult. You know, we're dealing with state regulators and we're dealing with this and we're dealing with, you know, a cash only business and all the things that everybody knows about this industry. But it's been it's definitely taught me a lot more about business. I think the racing team, you know, as, as I raced from 2004 on, I owned my own team. So I learned how to go get a sponsor, keep that sponsor happy, make sure that sponsor paid me and try to give them more than I had promised them. And that's similar to raising money for things like this. You're always out trying to raise capital right. because we're expanding so fast constantly. And so there's never any money coming in. There's money coming in, but it's going right back out. And I learned all this stuff about business, but I was prepared because of the racing, you know, I mean, finding money was what I had to do racing, keep the people happy. And that's kind of the same thing with, with this deal. So it's, it's not an industry I ever thought I'd be into. Right. I was completely void of drugs in my career. Yeah. Um, I, I, I would drink, I'd go out with my buddies and get drunk and get, we do get, we'd, we'd party after races and stuff like that, but not, not very much. We trained a lot. But I always was under the same impression about cannabis that it was, you know, the devil's the devil's drug. And if you start that, you're on your way. And then, you know, got into the business and researched it and found out, you know, there's so many people in Ohio where it's medically legal that we help. We, our, our average customers is 55 plus. Mm -hmm. So we're helping a lot of older people with pain and, and other issues. So it, it's it's fulfilling. It's it take one of the reasons we, you started this question is why do I not have a race team? Yeah. And it's because all my time goes to this. So, you know, at some time here in the future, I think I will have a race team. You will. So yeah, I'm, I'm not so. just making this up. This is no, something. No, I, I really enjoy it. I'm not, do I want to, do I want to do it to the level to where I'm here? Every, I'm at every single race and I'm, do, I, I don't think so. Okay. I, I think I've done, I've done that long enough. You know what I mean? I would love to come to seven or eight races and, have somebody that runs a team, but I come in and go, what, are you, what is this? Do, do I need to fire you? You know, yeah. uh, but I don't want to be so involved. And I also, quite honestly, would like to be at the, the area where I could go, yeah, I'm going to run my super bike team this year. And we're going to try to get sponsors, mm -hmm. you know, not where I go, oh, if we don't get this sponsor, we're done. You know, that's how I kind of did my whole career is finding sponsors and running teams. And, and, and you were always as good as your last race. You right. Know? And it, it's, it's a, high pressure life. Right. But here's the thing with you, you, like I said, obviously flat track, you're involved in AFT. Um, you, for a while you did, uh, off-road racing, uh, in those buggies. Yeah. You did a bunch of that. Yeah. And some truck stuff too. Trucks, did some you car did truck stuff, stuff. Some, some you, IMSA stuff. And, you did American Le Mans. You, you yeah. were part of that, yeah. that group. You've done a lot of racing in all kinds of forms. If yeah. you started a team, would it be road, motorcycle road racing? Might it be something else? Well, you know, I have a buddy of mine that we've talked a bunch and he, he has a lot of money. I have a little bit of money. He's got tons and tons of money. And we've talked about starting a team for everything. You know, he's into it. Um, he's getting ready to retire from what he does. And we wanted to kind of build a, like a super team, you know, where we have a, you know, from NASCAR, IndyCar, every, co you know, IMSA, off-road truck, motocross, flat track, road race, kind of have everything and build a brand around that and just enjoy it. I mean, it's obviously a pretty uh, huge project, but it's something that would be fun. Yeah. You know, something like Penske does, you know, I mean, they're more in the car side only, but, you know, uh, Gibbs got into the Supercross a little bit right. too. Something right. where we kind of, everything we enjoy doing, but obviously at that point, you've you got to have sponsorship. You're not going out and doing that on your own. So mm -hmm. that's something we're talking about. So if it was just me, I'd have a super bike and a road race team if I was doing it. I you're mean, right. a super bike and a, and a flat track. Team. So you would still, and, and as far as flat track, you're, you're going to continue to do some flat track as well. Yeah, a little bit. I, you know, I'm right at the point now where, you know, I go out and I ride the super twins class and I continue to be at the tail end of the group, you know, I'm beating two or three. I got eighth at Atlanta and I got 12th at, at, um, at, uh, the last one, which was basically last, but everybody was pretty close. Everybody was within a 10th or two, but then I look at my times and I could probably be top three or top win uh, uh, the, the production twins class, mm -hmm. right? But I don't really want to ride that class either. Not that those guys aren't great, but it's kind of like, listen, I want to ride with these guys, but I'm also getting to the point where I can beat three or four of them. And so, you know, am I, am I, I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to keep doing it after this year. 
What about so you're here for Stock One Thousand and racing in Super Cup, yeah. Superbike? Uh, sorry, Superbike. And you love this track. You've been back here a bunch. Oh yeah, I love this place. Beyond this track, I mean, what happens if you you know do great, win the race or podium or whatever? I don't know. Michael Kiley, who who's you know owns Titlers and everything, he said, hey, maybe we do Laguna. That's fun, and I and I love Monterey. So I love here, and I love Monterey. Perfect. You know what I mean? And it's like you know I can talk my wife into coming here because I got her at the off stuff. Right, and I can talk. My, I can talk my wife into going to Monterey anytime because right. she's heard of yeah. Carmel and Carmel Valley. You know what I mean? So that's easy. Um, but you know, I don't know. We're, I, that's what Michael said. Because you want to do, right. and I said, let's just get through this. One of the things is we really don't have the infrastructure for this. Like I've got, if you go over and look at us, I've got all my old stuff that I had left over from my road race team. You know, tire racks and and toolboxes and stuff that were kind of pulling and wiping the dust off of and putting a tightler sticker on it instead of a, you know, Pegram racing. So we don't really have the infrastructure. I don't have the mechanic. I mean, I, what I did on this weekend is I brought in as many of my old mechanics that don't have jobs with other teams. And, I, and a lot of guys, my mom and dad are here, my girls, my wife, a uh, guy, Cam and Co, who was here back. Everybody that was here in 09, I'm trying to like kind of bring them back. Mm -hmm. And so we're just trying to have fun this weekend. And you know, of course, when like we'd go, we go to that Australia Superbike uh, yes. vintage race, and we go, yes. "Hey, this is just for fun." And then I have a vintage FJ twelve hundred Yamaha in a prototype frame that makes one hundred and eighty horsepower to rear wheel. So all of a sudden, we got serious. Right. <laughs> you know I mean? This bike made one hundred and five horsepower originally. Now it makes one hundred and eighty, and it's all the best guys that used. You know, it's all past champions and everything. And all of a sudden, we look at our lap times, and we're within two seconds of the world super sport times. Right. You know, from the year before. So. Same thing with this. It's supposed to be fun. Am I going to get competitive? It's pretty much in my nature. I mean, yeah. you, you saw it this morning. We went to the, we had a go kart race this morning, and yeah, he won the, the guy in the last corner to win he, the race. So. Larry won the Cheesehead Championship, which right. was on the karting track. And he told me going in, he said, "I'm going to win this thing." And he was like, "He always it. thinks that." Yeah. I, but he was leading. Well, if you don't and, think that, no, then you got no chance. Yeah, you know, and 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 that's what you were asking me about the flat track. When I show up at those flat tracks, I feel like you know, if everything goes right and tracks right, and it's, I don't like the bumpy tracks anymore, the dangerous tracks, but I feel like I could win. And I, like I told you, I'm I'm like a tenth or two off of where I need to be, and and that's why I don't know if I'm going to do it. If I don't, if I ever show up and I don't feel like I could win something, unless it's something new I'm doing, if I jump in a race car that I've never drove, you know, then I don't. It's not as fun for me. Now, right. I don't have to win for it to be fun, but I have to know in my mind, if everything lines up, you can win. Yeah. Yeah. Spe not not to make this entire conversation about hippie lettuce, but is that is there any chance of Ohio having it legalized for everybody? Yeah, it's going to legalize. Yeah. Aren't you just going to be the richest freaking guy in the world? At that point, I, w I would be, but it's going to be probably two to four more years. So, so can you wait that long? Yeah. Just loaded? Yeah. I, well, I'm not going to be loaded, but I'll be in better shape than I am now. But the thing that's amazing I'm about like a promoter that well, puts the race on and the, the grandstands are completely sold out. And you go, man, you did good tonight. And he goes, hope I break even. Right. <laughs> now, is it is it the sort of thing where... Um, once, since you're licensed for that, you'll be licensed for the other thing. Will they give grant well, that, licenses? Or well, the that's why I pay a lobbyist a bunch of money, and I have seven attorneys. Right. You know, I used to think I had one attorney. He lived on my street, and he was my buddy. You know, now I have seven attorneys and a lobbyist. So, yeah, I mean, that's what we will be pushing. And I have meetings with the lieutenant governor and governors, and I play all these games that I never saw myself being involved in. But... Yeah, it's I mean, it's, it, it's amazing. I was saying, literally, when we had the vote, and, and I heard that it was only going to be restricted to a certain number of people that are, were going to be able to do this business. And when I voted for it, I'm a progressive enough thinker that I thought it was a good idea and it's yeah. good for the economy. I never knew that one of the 12 was Larry Pegram. <laughs> well, I mean, what, what was you it? Would you would have never voted, voted that said, no way. <laughs> okay, I'm not letting that happen. <laughs> so... But no, I mean, at that time, you were already probably laying the groundwork to have it. Oh, happen. yeah. I mean, it was a, it was a, that was the thing. It was a, you know, it was a year to year and a half process of building a, a 900 page application that, to, to you know, we, we were the fifth highest scoring group out of everybody in the state. You know, there was 187 groups to put in. It was a, a considerable amount of money to start it. And so it was, it was a risk. There yeah. was a lot of time and money and work that went into it. But we, we you know, I, I don't like to lose. So, yeah. <laughs> Well, like you said, I mean, the ability of you be, being able to deal with sponsors and, you know, it trained you so well for doing this. It's cool that there's well, and it's race weekend, too. Something's going to happen right. every time. Something, you're never. I mean, yes, there is times you roll the bike off the truck and everything's right. And they change the tires and you do nothing and you win the race. Yeah, now, that happens every once in a great while. But normally it's 
you know, you're on pit road and things overheating and the race right. is starting to, I mean, there's always something you got to fix. And it's kind of the same thing in this business. There's always somebody that I got to, okay, this guy is this, if we move this around, you know, or all the, you know, the lights in this room are not coming on right. And the plants are doing this. I, I mean, I, it, it's, I've learned more about, <laughs> I've learned more about being a farmer in the last year than, or last three years than I've ever th- could imagine. Yeah. Well, Ohio is a good place to do it. It's yeah. very, a, lot of, a lot of growing land yeah. around. Yeah. So we run out of time, unfortunately, Larry, but obviously you've already won a race this weekend. We're hoping you win more and, yes. and uh, continue. I might just leave now. I won. Well, I can just say, well, they can say how, did, how did it go? Well, I won. I left. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> but no, good luck to you this weekend Thank and to you your guys. program. It's good to see you back here with us. Um, you're one of the good guys in our paddock. And we watch NAMP. Who are the bad well. guys? Let's, let's call them out right now. Who do you not like? I don't know. Oh, no, because you said you're I, one of the good guys. So I basically insinuated there's bad guys. Maybe, I want you. Maybe, <laughs> Who are the, the bad guys? One of the very uh, good guys. The rest are you good. Go. They're good. all good. He's excellent. So, yeah. I love all you guys. You know, but that, anyway. guy, that guy Todd. Nobody <laughs> likes him. <laughs> F Todd. Yeah. But um, anyway, thanks so much. And, you know, tune in to watch the racing this weekend. Uh, uh, actually, the Stock 1000 race on Sunday is going to be on Facebook. Uh, and it's live on our, our page. It's at 1210, I believe. And Larry's is that also twelve ten here or twelve ten twelve ten Central Time. Thank so you. Oh no, yeah. it's um yeah, it is Central Time. So, so it's be uh, one ten in Ohio. So one if you're watching this in, in London, in London, all his fans, the London, many, Ohio. I have a dispensary. I, I have a dispensary in London, Ohio. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> if you're in London, go to mine. <laughs> So anyway, watch watch Larry and the rest of the, the guys uh, race this weekend. We've got all kind of you've got baggers going. We've got mini cup, okay. obviously stock one thousand super Is that sport, correct? super bike. Yep. Yeah, King baggers, of the, King of the baggers. Oh, you're talking about bikes. Yeah, I should have said mission King of the baggers. Oh, I, I didn't said old bags. We got old bags. We got that's yeah, that'll, we got be, one that'll be that'll be next year. That'll be we'll add that class. I think you should year. have to be an old bag to race the baggers. Did you ever think about doing baggers? Yeah, they called me. You, and I said, I, no you, way. No, you'd be perfect no, on that. Yeah. No. That, that bag full of weed. Did you see Tyler O'Hara on that thing? <laughs> He's so out of, on the edge on that thing. I don't ride on that. I ride controlled, calm. He's sliding. You'd be fine on no, those. No, I wouldn't. I, no. <laughs> I guarantee he does one this year. Yeah, we'll, we'll get him back to that and no. with his new team, Pegram, or new new old team, Pegram yeah. Racing, and yeah. so involved in all disciplines. So anyway, thanks, guys, for watching this special edition. Thanks. It was very special.